Hello everybody, this is John Brewer, and I'm out on my bomb range here to explain a little bit about the mechanics of how explosions work in Space Engineers. Now, in front of me I have a light armor plate with a large warhead set in the middle of it. Most of you are probably going to be familiar with these large warheads. They are pretty much what they say on the tin. When you hit them hard, when you shoot them, when you command them to detonate, when you set a timer on them, they will explode and they will destroy and damage things around them. At least that's kind of our intuitive understanding of how they work. In reality, they are both a little more complex and a little simpler than that. Let's start off with blowing something up. I'm going to go up to this warhead, I'm going to go to its panel, I'm going to start the countdown. Now, after 10 seconds, of course, this warhead is going to explode. It's going to blow a hole in this light armor sheet here. And then we're going to look at that hole, and we're going to see what we can find out about it. Now, we happen to know here exactly where the center of that explosion was. So I'm just going to measure it across. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 blocks across. So, if we multiply 9 by the 2.5 meters that we know a uh, large block is, we get 22.5 meters, or about 11.25 meters of blast radius on those large warheads. Okay, now, right next door here, we're sitting on a heavily armored platform. We have the exact same warhead here, and I'm going to set this one to explode as well. Start that countdown. I'm going to pull back, and when this explodes, as you might expect, this warhead is going to do considerably less damage to the uh, heavy armor than it did to the light armor. See, we've got a hole right through there, but it's quite small. There's only one block that's actually been removed uh, at all. If we go over, we compare these two, that is a night and day difference. Well, that's why they call it heavy armor. But, I've done something a bit cheeky here. I want you to come with me underneath the platform, where I actually have a layer of light armor laid underneath. And you'll see that the heavy armor did almost nothing to protect the light armor underneath here. Um... It blew out a hole underneath. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine across. That again is 22 and a half meters. The heavy armor did exactly nothing to protect the light armor inside. And in fact, light armor has the same damage resistance as gyros, small reactors pistons, engines, all that really important stuff that arguably you should be putting that heavy armor on to protect. When an explosion occurs in Space Engineers, the game engine looks at a number of concentric spheres centered on the explosion. The size of the spheres depends on the force of the explosion, so for this example I'll use the large warhead, since it's the most powerful explosive most people will run into. The first sphere is the largest. Any warheads or explosives inside this sphere will sympathetically detonate. For a large warhead, this sphere is 17 meters in radius, meaning that any warheads 17 meters or closer to the explosion will also explode. The second sphere is at 11.25 meters for a large warhead. Inside this sphere, large light armor and most large components are destroyed. The third sphere is at about five and a half meters. Inside this sphere, most non-armor small components are destroyed. The fourth sphere is only three meters across. Inside this sphere, large heavy armor, small light armor, and blast doors are destroyed. Theoretically, there is a fifth sphere inside this one, in which small heavy armor is destroyed. This fifth sphere is less than a meter and a quarter in radius, and so sits entirely inside the warhead. As a result, 
You can never damage small heavy armor with a large warhead. Give it a try and see. The practical upshot of all this is that heavy armor doesn't ex react the way that you might expect it to. Now, take this base that I've built for myself here. Okay, it's just this little box, and I say to myself, you know what? We have remote tech rules. I'm just going to sit in this box, and I'm going to drive my drones around, and I'm not going to let anybody come in here and bother me or shoot at me. This is just going to be my little safe space. And to make sure that it's safe, I'm going to armor it. 10 meters thick, or 5 meters thick, rather, with heavy armor, okay? This entire box is covered 2 blocks thick in all directions with heavy armor. Let's say somebody hit me with a missile or attached a large warhead to the outside of my base. I say to myself, no problem. I have heavy armor all over me. That explosion will get stopped by the outer layer of the armor. Well, if I were to be sitting in my little base, at the time that that explosion went off, what would I see? Huh. I think I can tell that I was attacked. Yep, yep, all the light armor inside here is gone. The reactor is still there, but the lighting's gone, the seat's gone. Uh, the door's still there, but all of this has been messed up. As it was a pretty catastrophic attack, it must look terrible from the outside. So, I go around to the outside, and I find... Oh, that doesn't look very bad at all. In fact, if I pull away the outer layer here, and I just look at the inside, I can see that uh, this center block here wasn't even destroyed. It was just deformed. So the inner heavy armor here is completely intact, and yet, my inside is still destroyed. That's the implication of spheres of damage with explosives, as opposed to having damage blocked by heavy armor. That covers the basic mechanics I want to examine in this video. If you like this video, please like the video. And uh, if you want to see additional videos, either on the math sitting behind the mechanics of explosions, how to create dial yield warheads at extreme cost, uh, such that they're not practical in survival, or if you want to see a video on how you can use the nature of explosive weapons to improve the design of your battleships, leave a comment below saying what you'd like to see uh, come up next, and I'll look into making a video about it. Until then, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.